afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining Show Me Hemp Association on another webinar. Today's webinar will be with one of our business members, Lauren Gabriel of America's Hemp Academy of DeSoto, Kansas. Um, I'd like to welcome Lauren as she gets ready to tell us more about America's Hemp Academy, what they do, and how you can be a part of it. And on a side note, if at any time during the presentation you have a question, you can submit it in the chat box. And at the end of the presentation, uh, we'll see about getting them answered. Lauren? All right. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, everyone, for being here and uh, having me today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our classes, um, what we do here, and then as well as our grow operation. Um, I am going to start this with a quick little video that a lot of our um, staff are speaking in. It also shows some great uh, clips from our 2019 grow um, and gives you a little bit better idea of what our academy does. So go ahead and get this started here. Hemp is more of an art. It's like growing a Picasso. Hemp is really not like any other crop that has been traditionally grown in Kansas. It takes a team of people be able to raise this crop because there's so many things you, you don't know, it will be new, and this is a very labor intensive crop as well. I try very hard to make sure that what I present at the academy and to people that are visiting our field station is something that's comprehensible to somebody that does not necessarily have any kind of formal training in the sciences. There's no pesticides available for, for use on hemp right now, and so really they have to be organic farmers, which is what I've been for 40 years. We want to give them the education that's going to make them be successful, and that education is different for each person. And so we really want to be situation specific because each person who comes through that door has a different background, a different expertise. We have several pieces of equipment that are used in the hemp industry. We can help demonstrate, help funnel that information to you so you can make those decisions on whether you'd want to make that investment or not. Our students that we've had that graduated, I, I just visited one about a month ago, watched them load up a truck of 12,000 pounds biomass to send off. They follow the instructions, uh, they followed our instructors, they used us. Once you're a student at the academy, we're here for life for you. We've actually had a student that came in with a contract and before they walked out the door at the end of the week, we would saved them over $7 million by not signing that contract. Uh, we still work with them today um, on a few different projects. The culture that we've been able to put together within our own families. I've been able to work side by side with my son and my husband. Bart family has been able to work side by side together. Lauren's family's done that. We've sat down to countless dinners after working 10, 12, 14 hour days harvesting side by side. Having a culture that everyone comes together to help each other out, and whether that's farmer to farmer or our academy to our students, having people to support you and answer some of the questions you have because I know that there's questions I can't answer, but I know that I can go to someone who does. And I think that's such a big thing is having such a big support group and that's really what we want to give our students. One of the best things that hemp can do is it can revitalize rural families and rural communities. Mm -hmm. To get the government involved and educate the government is extremely important. We want to help farmers succeed and we want our government to be less of a red tape monster holding the farmer back from what the farmer knows how to do and that's farm. We could not have made it through everything from opening the academy, getting our seeds in the ground, to getting the plants back out of the ground without the team we have. All right, so I just like to show that kind of off the bat. It gives you kind of a, an idea of what we've gone through and uh, really what we want to do. Um, so here's our mission and message. And one of the things, you know, we really believe in is sustainable farming and the future of farming. Um, and factors that play into that are bringing back generations like mine back to the farm and that continued education. And that's really what we want to give our students is education and continued education. So here is our um, kind of layout for the week. This does kind of change class to class. We try to keep our classes fairly small so that way we can be situation specific like we talked about in that video. So Monday, we really talk about the basics of hemp in general. 
Um, we talk about, you know, identification and genetics. We talk about soil and nutrition. And then we talk about um, water, weed, and pest control. Tuesday, we talk about different byproducts of hemp. Um, this is actually where I speak. So this is kind of my favorite day. Um, we talk about hempcrete, hemp plastics, uh, biofuels, textiles and fabrics, kind of everything in between. And then we talk about some different processing techniques. And then we take our students over to our academic lab. Um, I will show some pictures here in just a little bit, but we have a pelletizer, a cold press and a steam extractor. And then our students also get to work hands-on and create hemp cream, hemp creek blocks that they get to take home at the end of the week. Um, so it's kind of a fun break from all of the lecture. Then Wednesday, we really dive into each type of hemp. So we talk about floral, whether that's inside or outside. We talk about fiber and grain, and then we talk about um, what each of those needs for planting, for harvesting, all of the equipment needed, drying techniques, things like that. And then Thursday, um, as we're wrapping up, we talk about kind of the third party pieces that come in or, um, you know, post harvest, what happens with that plant. So we talk about uh, banking and insurance. We talk about record keeping. We hit really hard on regulations because as, as we've gone through this, we really see that's where a lot of people struggle is just understanding what's being asked of them. Um, so we have um, our COO, Shelly, she actually worked for the Kansas Department of Agriculture, so she understands the regulation talk better than anybody. Um, so she talks about that, and one thing that we do is when we have students from out of Kansas, we sit down before class and we discuss regulations for those states, so that way we can really answer those questions. Um, at the end of Thursday, we actually have a social event, so we sit down, our whole staff together, um, as well as our students, and we kind of discuss the week and what everyone's kind of plans are, and we try hemp pizza crust and hemp cookies, um, which are from our one of our sister companies, and then throughout the week, uh, we do have guest speakers who come. Some of them are actually students who took our course and then found themselves in the hemp industry. And then some are um, industry leaders of the hemp industry. Um, and so they come each week, which are um, a great resource to have as well. So here's our course schedule for the remaining of, uh, remainder of 2021, as well as 2022. So like I said, our classes are Monday through Thursday. They are nine to four, and we have a class coming up in about a month. Um, those classes are $2,000 per individual, but we do offer a 25% discount to anyone um, from Show Me Hemp. So if you have any questions, uh, my contact information will be at the end of this presentation, or you can also reach out to Megan. So I'm going to go through some pictures now of our facilities, um, our equipment, and then our grow operation. And then like Megan said, any questions you guys have, I would love to answer those at the end. So this is our facility. Like Megan said, we're here in DeSoto, Kansas. We're about 45 minutes uh, west of Kansas City and about 15 minutes east of Lawrence, so kind of right there in between. So this is our academic lab. Like I said, our students created uh, hempcrete blocks that they get to take home. This process, process has changed a little bit over time. So this is one of our first classes here. Uh, the academy has been around for about three years. So this is um, the one, I believe, the very first class in 2019. This is our steam extractor we discussed. Uh, this takes about three hours to process hemp. This is actually an academic model that we have in our lab uh, for sole research purposes, but there are industrial size models of these throughout the US. I believe there's about five or six right now. Um, and so this is just another great resource to show our students. We have ran tests on this and use products that come off of this. But the great thing about steam extraction is that it doesn't need a refinement process after extracting. And so this is something we talk about in class is different ways to extract and how, um, you know, there may be pros and cons of each. And this is one that definitely a pro is that you don't have to extract or uh, refine after. This is our cold press. You saw it running in that video. So what this does is takes hemp seed and it gets two byproducts out of this that can then be used. So uh, to the right of this, it's not pictured, but there's a hopper that you feed your hemp seeds into. And the long tube piece that's coming out, that's called your cake, that can be milled down into hemp flour. And that's what's used for different hemp foods. And then the other product is the hemp oil. Um, keep in mind, this isn't CBD oil. This is just hemp seed oil. 
So this is what can be processed into um, biofuels, paint varnish, things like that, as well as direct consumption. Uh, so you could actually pick this up and use it as a salad dressing as it sits right now if you'd like. This is the hemp mill. This one is not actually a picture of ours, uh, but this is the same model we have. This is from a German company. And when we first got this about a year and a half ago, we were the only ones in the US that had this. And as far as I know, that still holds true. So we have a great video of this that we show in class of hemp cake being ran through to create hemp flour. And that's what we use for our hemp pizzas and hemp cookies. And this is an example of our hemp cookie dough and our hemp uh, pizzas. Like I said, we get to uh, try those at the end of our class week. Those are always a big favorite. I personally prefer the hemp pizza crust to regular pizza crust, actually. So this is a picture of our grow operation. Uh, we have three light deprivation greenhouses on the left for our drying, and then two clear greenhouses on the right for growing. And as you can see, the field behind, that is our hemp field. So this is kind of our first and second day of harvest that this was taken. We did about 12 acres outdoors of hemp. So, and we're gonna get to, um, to some more pictures of those here. So these are um, our plants in the greenhouse. We planted between 19 and 20,000 seeds. Uh, we did plant July 1st in 2019. So we were a little bit behind uh, we had a lot of rain that year here, and we are actually in a riverbed where we uh, have our operation. So we had a lot of flooding, and we kept having to push back and push back and push back. So we finally got in the ground July 1st, um, and so we definitely had some weather to overcome. So here are seeds here. Um, you see our trays up top there between, you know, 6 and probably 12 inches. These are our transplants. So this is transplanting day. We had um, a three-seater transplanter here, and then we had three people following the transplanter to um, kind of make sure all of those plants were standing upright, they were packed correctly, uh, making sure that none of them had missed, anything like that. So this was a big day as well. And there is our beautifully transplanted field. Um, we worked that field pretty hard uh, cultivating, and really getting it ready for these transplants. And you'll kind of see um, in the next couple of pictures, you'll see some of the cultivating we did. This is just like a picture I like to share um, of one of our plants kind of hitting its peak of the pretty beautiful broad leaves. Um, just one that I like to share. Here we have um, our watering system. So one of the other problems that we had was we didn't have water rights where we were uh, to the well. So we were hauling water. We ended up creating um, water rows for our fields. And we took a 6,000-gallon tanker, put it in the back of a semi. And then our engineer, Ethan, actually created a sprinkler system that we mounted to the back of that truck and uh, took it down our field. And that's how we actually en ended up getting water. Um, one of the good things we had, like I said, we had lots of rain that year, and so water wasn't actually as big of a problem as we thought it would be. Um, but that is one thing that since then we have decided irrigation is the way to go if you can make it happen. So here's where I was kind of talking about cultivating. This is kind of halfway through our grow. Um, you see how clean those fields are. Not a whole lot of weeds, especially in between rows. And so that was one thing that we really learned that is um, something you have to be on top of is weeding your fields. And that is one thing that when our students come here, we always make sure they know cultivating is going to be important. Um, we had a field close to us that actually was kind of let go and it went to weeds and those hemp plants couldn't overcome the weeds and it, a lot of those plants were lost. So. So this is um, the beginning of harvest for us. We actually worked with a company called Farmax out of Nebraska. They have a uh, implement that they had kind of altered a little bit to work specifically for hemp and they have hemp specific equipment. Um, they hadn't really done a whole lot of trial testing. So they wanted to bring this down. We let them run it in our field. Um, and we kind of realized that it wasn't going to be the best for floral. We grew cherry wine in 2019, so that's a floral crop. And we realized that that really wasn't the best way to harvest for us. So we sent them to a field next to us that was going to seed. 
Um, but we'll get a couple better pictures here. So on the left again is our field day where they brought this down right before harvest and many of our students were able to check out how this works and um, kind of what came from it. And then they actually brought down their family and they were able to speak about each of those implements. So um, what this did was it separated um, the fiber and still kept it in the bin as well as any grain there was and our floral. And we'll get to some pictures of that in just a second as well. So um, I like to show this picture. It is the same as a draper head. So instead of running with an auger, it runs with a conveyor belt. And then they also have rubber tines. So that was actually better for the plant for hemp specific because it's not destroying that plant kind of as it goes through and kind of uh, rumbling it all the way through the equipment. But here is what came out. So on the right are your fiber stalks. Um, and like I said, it saves those. So if you're doing a dual crop with grain and fiber, this is great because you're going to have your grain and your fiber. And it was a very quick process, so it could uh, really cut out some uh, different pieces there. But on the left is our floral. So as you can see, everything that we wanted is kind of milled up. And for our end process, this is just what not what we needed. Um, we wanted more of the buds to process instead of the buds and the leaves all being kind of milled together. So like I said, this is great for a fiber or a grain crop, but it just wasn't right for us. So we kind of moved it in a different direction. But again, that's what the Academy is here for. We're here for testing and research and getting that information out to our students. So here's one of our top colas. Um, and then here it is trimmed down. So we didn't actually do any pruning to our plants. Um, that's one thing that we've talked about this year we plan to do is pruning and kind of testing that. Uh, but for our first year of growing, none of us had experience growing hemp. And so we really just kind of wanted to test the waters and see what it could do. So here is inside of our light deprivation greenhouse. So this is drying. Um, so we harvested October 18th and with Kansas regulations, we had 10 days to get um, everything out of the field. And so we were really testing the best way to dry. And one thing that we like to teach our students is use what you have. You don't have to use everything that's hemp specific equipment. Uh, you'll spend a small fortune doing it that way. There are some great things out there that are catered specifically to this industry, but there are ways to um, work with what you may already have in place. So we had cinder blocks um, and then we went out and got this mesh that we laid in between. And so that was a great way to dry all of our top colas, as well as any material that we were keeping for our steam extractor, um, like leaves and different biomass. And then we were hanging all of our long branches um, to fully dry. Um, as we went on, we kind of realized that the cinder block and mesh was taking up too much space and it just wasn't allowing enough material to be moved through. So we moved into entirely doing these hog panels, um, which is what you saw hanging on the left earlier. So these were a really cheap option versus some of the stuff out in the hemp industry. So we hung these all throughout our light deprivation and then trimmed down each of our plants to hang on these hog panels. And we found that was the best way to dry for us. And that's actually what we um, have continued to do and what we will do this year. Um, so there's a great picture. And as you saw in that video up there at the beginning, when you have about 10 of these rows in a greenhouse, um, it really stacks up. So um, good airflow is really important. Having fans all throughout to really circulate that air is going to help with drying and um, decrease mold. So after drying, uh, we move on to processing and kind of getting our buds out of the way. This process here is called bucking. This specific bucker is called the D&E double bucker. And that's because two people can actually work on this at the same time. So as you see, there's one plant um, already inserted here. So you take each of those branches, you fit it into whichever hole um, it fits best in without having too much room to move. And then on the back, there are rollers that pull that stem all the way through. So right below this plant, there would typically be some type of tote or bucket. And so on the back side, you're gonna pull through your stem and then what will be dropped is your biomass and your buds. And that's what you will later process. So here again is that picture um, of me and my father on the right. And then on the left, we're actually working on grain cleaning. 
So um, he helped harvest the fields and grow the field that actually had seed in it. And so we were working on cleaning that. Um, I like to share this picture because uh, my father's been farming his whole life and his father before him, they've always done traditional row crops and cattle. And this um, grain cleaner here has actually been in our family since about 1930. And so we pulled that out of the shed. It wasn't working uh, right off the bat. So we took this apart, uh, every single piece apart and put it back together. And so that was a great uh, experience for us. I like to share these pictures because it's not every day that you learn alongside someone who has been farming their whole life. And that's what I really think is so special about hemp is the fact that it's new to everybody. We're kind of all in this together. Um, building those networks like Show Me Hemp and America's Hemp Academy are things that are really going to help us uh, keep moving forward in this. And so I really think that is such a special thing. So at the end of our class week, all of our students also become part of our um, student network, which connects them to all of our previous students. And then they also get to come back to different events that we put on. Um, now that COVID has slowed down a little bit, we can now have guest speakers back with us, um, which is what we were doing before COVID. And we also have field days and anytime we have events, our students can come back to those. Um, but our student network, network also connects those um, about 105 students actually right now to each other. And so we have had everyone from doctors, lawyers, we've had insurance agents, um, of course, growers, but we've had even chefs in here. We've had kind of everyone across the board in our classes. And so it is a great resource for, um, you know, anyone who's not even sure where they want to be in the industry or someone who knows exactly where they want to be. There's someone who can um, kind of help guide you or if you need advice, anything like that. And I'm sure there's someone who's been through exactly what you're doing before. So this is actually Bish Enterprises speaking. Um, this was in January of 2020, I believe. So a lot of our students came back. We had hemp pizzas um, and it was a great night for everybody. And then here's our field day. Um, we had all different kinds of equipment out there. We show off um, what we use for drying and what we've used for um, you know, all of our planting, our cultivating, what we had planned for harvest was out there. And so that was a way for our students to come out and kind of see what we were up to. If they had been there in, earlier in the year, they could see those plants um, kind of at full grow there. And speaking of field day, we will have another field day this year. Um, we are not exactly sure on the date on that, kind of depends on the plants. Um, but we are inviting anyone from Show Me Hemp to come out as well. Uh, Megan will have a date later in the year, but anyone that would like to come out and see that, come join us, join our students, and just kind of see what we're up to. We'd love to meet you. Um, we also will be at the event next Thursday, so if anyone has any questions then, we'd love to answer them. Um, we all we may also do a tour beforehand of our facilities and our lab if that's interesting to um, any of your members we would love to have that um, but with that here's my contact information or the academy's contact information as well as america's hemp which is kind of our mother company um, and with that i will turn it over to megan and any questions you guys have i would love to answer all right Thanks, Lauren. That was um, really great information. Um, I like seeing a lot of good visuals also. Um, we haven't had any questions come in directly, and we'll give it a few minutes, I guess. Um, I thank you for offering our members a 25% off. Uh, I think Absolutely. that's a great value. And I think that uh, networking, communicating, staying connected, um, everybody in the industry, it's kind of what it's going to take to help the industry grow. And... Um, we're very appreciative that you're out there kind of um, sharing the ins and outs about growing hemp. And Absolutely. And even after this, if anyone has any questions, feel free to call. Um, we're happy to answer those because what makes this industry bloom is the education part. Um, we want to make sure that everyone is ed as educated as they want to be. So that's what we're here for. Well, we thank you. Um, for anybody that wants to further uh, questions or connect with, Lauren's information was up there on the screen. We will send this out. It will be available um, for viewing again uh, post-webinar. And um, you can reach me at meganb at showmehemp.co. 
or you can send questions to Lauren directly at info at americaskempacademy.com. Thanks, everybody, for joining us, and thank you, Lauren, and I look forward to seeing you again next Thursday. Thank you very much. Have a good day, guys. You too. Bye, all.